Hey guys, what's up? I figured I'd make a personal appearance uh, before we start this ADAF35 fluid maintenance video. And the reason being is I haven't put out a video, YouTube video, for about two months now. So a lot of people are asking, are you okay? Are you dead? What's going on? I'm um, posting on social media and a lot of stuff here and there, but it's been really busy at the shop. And then, uh, you know, the wife's been asking me to go on vacation. So I've probably gone on three vacations in the last two, three months. Uh, it's actually burnt out on vacations. Um, so between vacations and the overload of the shop, there's not much time for anything else, especially, you know, editing YouTube videos. The shop comes first. Um, but starting off 2024 here, I may do a 2024 update video, but just to give you an idea, uh, we're gonna start off the year with smaller videos like this, maintenance videos, you know, they're shorter length. Uh, but I have other videos shot that are really important, like, you know, a lot of really good content, like uh, second gen 3.5 EcoBoost timing job, complete walkthrough, uh, the 3.5 internal water pump on the transversely mounted engines, uh, complete walkthrough on how to change that and time those engines. I have the leaky coolant lines and exhaust manifolds in the 3.5 uh, EcoBoost first gen, complete. I mean, it's great information. And I even have a video shot on how to change out the 17 and 18 second gen EcoBoost uh, oil pans, the plastic pans that leak all the time, no matter what you do. I have a, I have a video on how to trans, uh, you know, convert it to an aluminum pan and all the different things you need to make that happen. I have all that stuff shot, but they're longer videos and they're really time consuming to edit. And you know, the shop comes first and then YouTube. Uh, so in the meantime, we're gonna start off, we're gonna get these videos out and uh, we're gonna start off with these shorter ones and then roll into those bigger, longer, more in depth ones. So this video right here, you'll hear me talk about it. You know, the new 8F35. Well, this video was shot three years ago, three years to the day, three years ago, this thing was shot. That's how much of a backlog of videos that I have shot that I need to put out. And I'm finally putting them out. Um, so anyways, let's get to this video. Great information on how to maintain the new 8F35 transmission uh, going forward. It's pretty similar to the old 6F35, just a new fluid and a new service procedure. Let's check it out. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Type Make You Loco channel. Today we're going to show you how to change your transmission fluid in the new Ford 8F35 transmission. Now this new transmission is basically an 8-speed version of the older 6F35 that Ford came out with in 2009 in their cars and small SUVs. Now this new 8F35 trans started being used in the 2019 Ford Edge when paired to a four-cylinder engine. Then they expanded it out to the 2020 Ford Escape with the big refresh for the Ford Escape. And then of course they'll expand it to other models in the future. Either way, uh, the procedure uh, to drain and fill and adjust the fluid and even the fluid spec is going to be the same no matter what model in year you have. Our demonstration vehicle today is a 2020 Ford Escape, uh, but the procedure, like I said, is going to be the same no matter what you uh, have. The fluid's not that expensive. The procedure doesn't take that long, and you want to do this every 30,000 miles. Remember, this transmission has an internal filter that's not serviceable, and you must split the transmission caves, case halves to actually service that filter. Very, very expensive. So you want to drain the fluid and change it out every 30,000 miles and keep it fresh and keep that filter uh, from clogging up. Let's go ahead and get started. Once the underbody shield is removed, it's actually pretty simple to service this transmission. It's very similar to the 6F35 they used in the 2013 through 2019 Ford Escape. So right here in the bottom of the transmission, there's a 14 millimeter drain plug. Uh, and then right here on the side of the transmission, you can see it way up inside of there, similar to the 6F35 in the 13 through 19s, is a leveling plug, okay? So I'll try to get you a better shot of that coming up and through the wheel well here. You can see it right there, right there. That's our leveling plug. That's the plug we're going to use to actually set the fluid level when the transmission's at full hot. What's really cool, look on the side of the trans here, I can get you up inside here and focus. It's actually a little label right there. It gives you a lot of information. Mercon Ultra Low Viscosity. It gives you the temperature to set the fluid at. It even tells you right here that it's a leveling plug, bottom of the threads on there. 
at that temp, and when you're done, torque it down to this spec right here. All right, let's get it draining. So again, it's a 14 millimeter. We're gonna go ahead and loosen it. Once it's loose, we should be able to spin it out by hand. Now this port on here is pretty darn small, so it's gonna take a little while for this fluid to drain out. So you wanna get this going first. And you can see the fluid on here for 21,000 miles uh, is actually pretty dark. Not so bad, but it has all the initial wear material floating around in there. It's a good idea to do an initial drain at 30,000 miles. And then I would do another drain at 60, 90, 120, and so forth. The reason being is um, the filter on this transmission is internal. So if it ever gets plugged up, you are pulling the trans and splitting it in half to change the filter, okay? So let that drain for a little while. Here's, whoa. Here is the drain plug that came out of there, so there's nothing on the threads, but there's a little like crush wash right there. You see it? Make sure that's still on there and in good condition, and we can reuse this. Okay, well that's draining out. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna loosen and remove that, that leveling plug in the side of the transmission. So I just use you know a long ratchet like this. I use a six inch extension and our 10 mil hex. What you wanna do is just, I, I hook it right through here. And you kind of look over and see, I know I'm probably blocking you guys. Just wanna get lined up in there. There we go. And then I break torque on it like that. Should just be a snug. And then I can go in here and pull it out. Usually I can get it better from down below here if it's broken loose. Spin out my fingers. Woo. All right. It's a big old plug in the side there. So this plug right here, again, just make sure it's cleaned up and that this O-ring on, this green O-ring is good to go. And you can reuse this. So at this point, we're, we had the leveling plug out, drain plug out, and I'm gonna give it a little bit uh, so I can do a good exchange on there and uh, really get this transmission drained out. After about 5-10 minutes, you'll start to get a thin stream like this or inconsistent drip. At that point, you're good to go. You can go ahead and put the drain plug back in. Now the drain plug, like I said, has that little crush washer on there, but I like to use a little bit of thread sealant on there all the way around. It's probably a little too much. And go ahead, wipe it off. And get up in there a little bit. And you can go ahead and thread it in. Make sure you thread it in by hand. You don't want to cross thread and crack the case, okay? Now the torque spec on this bolt here, this drain plug, is 124 inch pounds. Now if you don't have a torque wrench, don't worry, just don't over tighten it. So what I do, I use a regular 3 8 ratchet, 14 mil socket, okay? and we go ahead and tighten it up, okay? It'll hit a point where it dead stops like that. When it dead stops, you just tighten it a little bit more. It's just a drain plug, that's all it is. And we'll go ahead and clean it off on there. Just like that. Okay, so we have our drain plug back in, tightened down. Our leveling plug over here on the side is out and ready to go. We're gonna go back top side now and start filling the trans up. A few quick notes here before we go top side and start filling the transmission up. You'll notice on the side of the transmission where that leveling port is at is directly above this coolant hose and this sheathing that's on it. So when it's leveling out and dribbling out of there, it's just gonna soak this sheathing and drip for days afterwards. You don't want that. So now while it's clean and dry, get it up and out of the way on top of the subframe, make sure it stays. And then when it's leveling out as the transmission heats up, 
it'll just dribble out on top of the metal subframe here and make sure you have a drain pan down below. There's gonna be a good amount of fluid coming out as this transmission heats up and it levels out on there. All right, let's go top side and start filling her up. Back up top here in the engine compartment, let's start filling the transmission back up. So all of these different engines and models out there, we need to remove the air cleaner box to access the fill port on top of the transmission. You can see it down inside of here where it's kind of has the fluid eking out of it right there. You can see it right there. That is the transmission fill port slash vents. So we need to gain access to that by removing the uh, air cleaner box here. So there's a couple of clamps, sensors, and it kind of picks up and out of there. It's not too bad at all. All right, here we go. So we're gonna pull off the air intake temp sensor right here, just unclips. And then it usually just has a, a uh, push pin holding it into the box here. And then there's a little retainer right here. Just follow it down, you'll see. And that'll just lay off to the side, make sure it's not touching the fans. And at that point, we unscrew the clamp right here, seven mil. We'll loosen that up. That's enough right there. Okay. Then we need to deal with this air inlet snorkel right here. These ones are definitely, definitely different. So we have a couple different fasteners right here. And these are just like scribbits almost little plastic rivets. So you pop them up in the center and then the whole thing will come loose. So it's loose from the, the radiator right here, the cowling. You can go ahead and unclip it. So it should just pop out over here, but we can also pick up the whole housing together. Now these air boxes, they don't usually bolt in. Not in any, any of the newer Ford vehicles. They just push into these rubber grommets. So we'll loosen ourselves from the air inlet bellow right here. Get that out of the way. It's gonna be tight. Okay, good to go. We're loose over here and our sensor's disconnected. So let's go ahead and loosen it from the bushings. And it's probably best just to take it off altogether just like that. So once you get the air box out of the way, it's not too bad. You can see it's all open underneath here now. Let's zoom in a little bit here. There we go. All right. Make sure that's clean. So right here, this little neck coming off of here, that is the uh, filler neck for the transmission. So this looks like this one with this grommet for the air box is directly over us. So we're gonna pop that out of the way and we should be able to get our funnel right into it. So on this one, it just has a cap on it that pushes on, and that's how it vents on there, and that's why there's a little bit of fluid on top of the trans. This is perfectly normal where it has a little bit of uh, moisture like that all the way around it, perfectly normal. All right, so while I have to clean the air inlet, we're gonna run the engine without the air cleaner initially here, okay? Clean up some of this mess down in here from it leaking. And then we'll get our transmission funnel and that'll fit right down in there, absolutely perfect. Check this out, transmission funnel, it'll fit right into the hole here and this little metal bracket will actually support it, check it out. It's perfect, like genius engineering, look at that. So we can go ahead and start filling it up. Now the fluid that this takes is the Mercon ULV fluid. Only use this fluid. I'll link to it down below so you guys have a reference. And I'll start with about five quarts of fluid in here. You cannot overfill it because it's gonna drain out that leveling plug. So just keep filling it until you see fluid coming out down below out that leveling plug. So I usually start off with about five quarts. Now the whole point of this is to fill the transmission enough to where the fluid starts coming out the leveling plug on the side of the transmission, okay? Cold, without it running, okay? And then we're gonna start it and we're gonna make sure to fill it 
until it starts coming out that leveling plug again. So right around three quarts is what you wanna dump into here initially. We're gonna go ahead, start the vehicle up. Make sure everything is away from the air inlet on here. There's no air filter to filter the air. So make sure there's nothing around here, okay? We can go ahead and start the vehicle up. Then we're gonna leave it in park. We're gonna come back out here. We're gonna continue filling the transmission until we start seeing the fluid drip out that leveling plug once again. At that point, we can go ahead and turn the vehicle off put our air filter housing and all that back together up here, we're done up here. Put the plug back in for the vent on there and everything. Good to go, moving on. And then we go down below, we watch that leveling plug and adjust it from there. Now with the engine running, we're simply gonna let it idle in park. Okay, I lean down a little bit here. And we're going to keep filling the transmission until it starts pouring out the leveling port on the side of the transmission. That was bottle number four. This is bottle number five. Like I said, it's okay to overfill a transmission. You want to overfill a transmission until it starts pouring out that port. At that point, all the adjustment is done down below. It'll, it'll self-level the transmission out. All right, so at five quarts with the engine running, we have fluid pouring out the leveling plug on the side of the transmission, so we are good to go. As the transmission fluid heats up and expands, more and more is gonna come out of this leveling plug on the side of the transmission. So you can see right now we're down to a dribble on there, that's good to go. At this point, the way it looks right now at the dribble, that is how you wanna see it when it's leveled out, okay? But first, we need to get up to full operating temp, 185 to 200. So at 185 to 200 degree transfluid temp, you wanna see this right here, where it's just dribbling out and leveled out with the threads. Once you level it out at that temperature range, you can go ahead and put your plug back in 26 foot pounds. With the plug back in on the side here, everything wiped up nice and clean. Our drain plug back in, transmission filled and adjusted. Don't forget to pull down your coolant hose. It's out of the way in the half shaft. At this point, we're done. Go ahead and put your shield back on and go for a test drive and you're good to go.